I reached a point where I thought, I want the next job to be one that I really can sink my teeth into. And if not, then I'm gonna do something else. And I was being offered a lot of sort of game show, dating type shows where you would read prompter and I just thought, I can't, I'm not gonna be happy doing this. Not that I'm above it, it's just not connecting to me. Yeah. And so I waited for a year and a half and I got down to $8,000 in my bank account, which when you're a freelancer and that's all you have left, even though 8,000 is still a lot of money, I saw no dollar coming in. I had been dwindling down, 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 and now I'm under 10 grand, and I still don't have a job, and I have rent to pay, and you know, that was the point where I remember in my checkbook, I still had a little checkbook, and I'm like, wow, $7,900, okay, I'm about out, and Survivor came. I had been up for two big game shows, and I didn't get either one of them. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire was on the air with Regis, it was a big hit. So every network was trying to find one. NBC had winning lines mm -hmm. and they went with Dick Clark. And CBS had 21 questions and they went with Maury Povich. But in both cases, I got a phone call saying, we, we really want you to understand that your skill is there, but you don't have a name and we need a name. But if we ever have a show that doesn't need a name, we're interested. Great. So I hear Survivor. Uh, being talked about on the radio. Mark Burnett was on the Jonathan Brandmeier radio show and I was driving on the 405 and here's this guy that sounds British or Australian, I can't really tell, but he goes, uh, it's just a crazy idea. I'm gonna take 16 people and I'm gonna leave them on an island and they have to work together and then every three days they vote somebody out and at the end the people come back and they're the jury and one person gets a million dollars. It's a brilliant concept. And I'm in the car going, That's oh my good. God, it is a brilliant concept. I gotta get in on this. And I called my agent and they were, I was at William Morris and, and I said, there's a show Survivor and I've got to get in. And it was at CBS and they said, well, CBS likes you, so you know, we'll try to get you in. And I went in and I was the first person Mark met with. And I remember being told that Moonves had said, yes, you can bring Probst in. I, I, he was a guy we considered for something else and he knew me from, v from Rock and Roll Jeopardy. And I sat with Mark for almost two hours and I had all this stuff prepped. I had anecdotes here and there and pulled them out of my pocket. If he brings up camping, yeah, I'll make up a story about camping. If he says, can you fish? Oh, I caught a huge fish. None of which would have been true. Didn't matter. He talked for an hour and 45 minutes about what he saw. And man, he saw it all. He saw it all. He said, it's this epic adventure, arcing stories, heroes and villains. And I'm just, I, I'm enraptured. It's like Joseph Campbell coming to life. And at the end, he said, so uh, is, is that it? And he had said to me, I don't think you can handle it. My concern is you're going to have rats crawling over you in our tents because we're going to be sleeping in tents, which we did. And I just don't think you can handle it. And man, that really tweaked me. And so I had like 15 minutes left and I had a picture and resume there. And I, I, I said, let me just, this, this is not me. I'm not a studio guy. I'm a writer. I've been in therapy. I get this show. I'm the guy. And it was this big impassioned moment, you know, to rip your picture up was this huge thing. And Mark goes, very nice to meet you. I was like, I, and I leave and I'm thinking, how can this be? I'm so connected to this show. And I called all my friends that were hosts that I knew. And, I, and there was like only 10 of us at the time that were hosting TV shows. And I, and I said, I just met on this show. I, I, I know I'm the guy for this show. You know when you know, I just know. And, and then they would all go, well, why don't you think I'm the right guy? Well, you're not the right guy. I, I know I'm the right guy. There's only one guy who could maybe do this show and it'd be Phil Kogan. This guy I used to work with at FX. He's this Kiwi from New Zealand, but they gotta want an American, right? I'm basically losing my mind over this horrible meeting I had. When I left, I had it pared down. It had to be me or Phil Kogan, a guy I'd worked with years earlier at FX. I don't hear anything. Month goes by, two months goes by, three months goes by. I really can't believe it because in my soul, I knew this was the one. So I made a letter in the bottle and I wrote like four articles that had been printed somewhere, but put in a bottle and washed ashore. And in every article, it talked about this show Survivor, which was going to change the face of, face of television, 
One article said Survivor will set a sum Survivor set a summer season viewing record. Survivor knocked Millionaire off the air. Survivor made Moonves so rich he bought his own island. And every story ended with, and experts say some of the success goes to the very likable but unknown Jeff Probst. And you mocked all this up, all these headlines? Mocked all this up. I was trying to break this notion that you had to be known, because that's what was getting in my way. It's the catch-22 of every right. young, young per you, they want a person with a name. How do I get a name if I don't get a job? And I honestly, I've never felt this about any other job I've been up for. I believed I was the right guy for Survivor and I knew I could bring something to it because I, I just felt it in my bones. So I had nothing to lose. So I sent this and I sent a copy to Mark Burnett and to Gen Maynard, who was the exec at CBS who was overseeing the show. And, you know, I didn't know if they got it or not. I knew it was risky because it could come across as pushy or, you know, arrogant or something. But I really had nothing, nothing to lose. And then I got a call about three weeks later and they said, you're meeting at CBS on Friday for Survivor. It's you and one other guy. And so my energy started coming back up again. And I go to CBS and I go to check in in the front and the guy before me is already signed in and it's Phil Kogan. And I thought, man, I am, I am connected to this. And, and I know Phil. So on some level, it's very cool that one of us is about to get a network show. On the other hand, I want it to be me. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. So we go into the green room together and we just talked about, you know, how cool it was. And, and then again, I think Phil went in first and then I went in second. And we just talked. And, and there was no, people ask, how do you audition? You don't. You just talk about the show and you talk about life and you talk about what you're into. There was never a, okay, let me give you a for example, Jeff. Because Mark didn't know the details of the show. He knew big picture. He knew what it was. But we were making it up as we went along out there. So there was no audition, thank God. And later he told me, he said it really came down to your FX live experience and the Sandra Bullock interview, that left turn you thought you made. And then a few weeks later, Phil Kogan gets Amazing Race and begins an Emmy win year after year after year. So, and Tom Bergeron gets Dancing with the Stars. So three guys that I really started with Within the course of like a year, all three of us had shows on the air 10 years later.